In this video, I want to break down 20 plus editing effects for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, if you're wondering how do you get these plugins, well, they're actually for sale on my website. So if you use the link down in the description below, you can go ahead and purchase these plugins on my website. So all these plugins are going to be down or, or on my website. You just use the link in the description below to go check out my website and buy these plugins for yourself so you can create these really cool effects. In this video, I'm just going to give you a basic overview of how to use these effects or what these effects effects do to kind of make help make you to just kind of help your decision on whether or not you want to purchase them. So this video, I'm going to go over almost every single effect that is on sale that is on sale on my website, link in description. The first effect I want to go over is this really cool Polaroid frame. Now this is going to have to be installed in your generators. So if I go to my generators, as you can see right here, Polaroid frame. So let's just apply the Polaroid frame. You're just going to apply it onto your clip and then you go to the end and then you're just going to trim it however long you want it. So in this case, we're on the Polaroid last this long. As you can see right here, here is a drop zone. So here is where you would select your image. So you want to go to this icon right here. Then go over to your media section or you know wherever you have your photo. Now this example, I'm just gonna have a, a compound clip, so this would be the photo. So scroll down and find your photo wherever it is. We're gonna go to drop zone, you're gonna click on drop zone, and then you're gonna click on the photo you want. So in this case, we're gonna use this one, click on it, and then just click on apply. As you can see, there we go. Now you just have the photo imported into your Polaroid, which I think that's really cool. It's just really easy instead of rather creating a whole Polaroid from scratch. As you can see right here, here are a whole bunch of different options. So you can type in a text. You can adjust the scale, the rotation. I try to do my best, you know, think through everything, what people would actually want. Now I'm going to go ahead, as you see right here, I'm going to maybe increase the scale just a little bit, something like this. So it's going to increase the scale. As you can see right here, you can move position, you can move the font, you can get rid of the font, you can adjust the drops on itself. So I think this is really cool. You have this really cool Polaroid frame. Now I'm going to add another effect to this actual Polaroid frame. But I'll go ahead and just click on option G and we'll just call this Polaroid right here. We'll call this Polaroid frame. And we're just going to create a compound clip because I'm actually going to add another generator to kind of create this really cool animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Make sure you know you remember where you stored that compound clip. So here's the compound clip. Now we're going to go over here to the generators and we're going to go to the generators right here. Instead of the generators, actually we're going to go up to my titles. This will also be in the, um, the link down in the description below. And we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we find rock back and forth. Honestly, couldn't come up with a better name for this title. We're going to place the title right onto the background right here. Now here's you can match the duration. I found 15 to 20 frames looks the best. So control D um, 15 frames right here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to apply the different photos to your drop zone. So you're just going to have this really cool rock back and forth. So if I play it right here, as you can see, it just animates. So it creates that really cool animation that I'm sure you, you, you've seen a lot. So what we're going to do is now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the photos for both drop zones. So you can see it rotates this way and then it rotates the other way. So you actually have to apply the photo twice. So drop zone one right here, you're gonna click on the Polaroid and then you're gonna do is go over to the title and you're gonna go to the second drop zone and apply the same photo. That way it's going to rock back and forth. And as you can see right here, I've labeled it drop zone one, drop zone two, and then drop zone one. So you can go through and adjust the settings. As you can see right here, now you have this really cool rock back and forth animation. If I click on it right here and if you want to Kind of it continually all you would do is you would just copy it so now it continually rocks back and forth and you create a compound clip if you want so play right here as you can see it creates this really cool rocking back and forth animation and there is the first two effects that will be down in my are on my website in the link down below the next effect i want to go over is this really cool sticker peel effect now i've already done a lot of the work and basically this is just a simple freeze frame i'll go ahead and put a link to the video showing how to create a freeze frame but i don't want to go through creating a freeze frame from scratch because it takes a while so this is just you can see right here this is just a very basic just freeze frame transition now i've done a whole bunch of videos showing you how to animate the cutout on. In this case, we're going to use a plugin from my website called the page curl effect. It basically creates or simulates like a sticker. So if I go to my effects right here, go to page curl, and now you can use an adjustment layer or you could just um, apply it onto the clip. So just going to apply the page curl effect onto the clip. Now what you're going to do is you're going to create, so if I play it right here, it peels off, which that doesn't look good. So we're going to click on it right here and we're going to click option G. We're going to create a compound clip and we're just going to call this reverse or whatever you're doing. So basically what you're doing, you, you adjust the settings until you get the look that you want. 
but you, now what you're doing is you're reversing the speed so it peels on. Now there is, it really isn't a better way to do this other than creating a compound clip. So go to here, reverse clip, and now instead of peeling off, it's going to peel on the screen. I think this is a really cool effect, so command R. And as you can see right here, now it creates this really cool like peel effect on. Now I found trimming the last eight frames looks the best. So we're set control D 22 frames. I just found trimming the last eight frames um, looks the best. That way it doesn't really, like, it just, I, I just feel like the animation looks better. So if I play it and then you see right here, you have this really cool sticker peel effect, um, freeze frame transition right there. The next effect I wanna go over is this really cool offset effect. Now if you're wondering how I did this kind of like freeze frame, as you can see right here, it's just basically a, a very basic freeze frame. As you can see right here, he is just sliding on the clip. So just gave you a basic overview. I just basically created a freeze frame right here and then this is animating to the freeze frame. Now this is this is kind of, you know, this is not part of the effect. So I'm not gonna show you how to create this part because this is definitely gonna take a while. But just in case you're wondering, it's just a basic freeze frame sliding on the screen. As you can see right here, that looks like a pretty cool effect. But if you create an offset effect to the background I just feel that feel like that looks a lot better now unfortunately the offset effect doesn't come with Final Cut you have to actually download as a plugin so if I click on offset and then we're just going to apply the offset right onto the adjustment layer now the adjustment layer is not I just it is not included in the website it's just a free plugin so what you're going to do is you're gonna go to horizontal or vertical offset whichever one you want to do click on keyframe now you're going to keyframe the horizontal or the vertical offset now go to the end of where you want the effect to end and remember you want to go by 100s so just got either have it keyframe by 100 200 300 negative 500 negative 600 always keyframe by 100 that way it completely pans across the screen so in this case we'll do maybe something like 200 that way the offset is going to pan across the screen twice so just remember it just goes by 100 so always make sure the end number is a, is a like 100 so 200 300 negative 400 that way as you can see right here it will pan across the screen so right here it's panning across the screen twice because we set it to 200 and then it locks Locks right into place. See right here, you have a really clean. Now you, you have to add motion blur, but there you go. Now you have this really cool offset uh, effect. Now remember, the longer you have it last, it might be a little laggy or stuttery. So definitely make sure this effect goes pretty fast, or it can definitely be a little stuttery. This effect is a very interesting effect. It doesn't always work, but it's a nice effect. You just you know, different situations. It's, it's a really cool effect. It can definitely make your videos look a little more creative. Unfortunately, you can't rotoscope in Final Cut, so this is the closest you're going to get to that infamous you know rotoscoping effect in after effects but there you go now you have a really cool offset effect so you don't have to just use it for this i'm just going to just give you an example but it, it's just a lot easier than trying to do this mainly in final cut just use a plug in this effect is a lot easier to you know recreate the next effect I want to go over is this really cool random tile effect. So you basically create this really cool like kaleidoscope effect. So I scroll down and then random tile. And you're just going to apply random tile onto the clip or the adjustment layer. As you can see right here, it creates this really cool like prism kaleidoscope kind of effect. So if I play it right here, this is pretty fast. But there you go. It creates this really cool kaleidoscope effect. Now you can take the radius, drag it up, drag it down. But there you go. It's just a really cool effect. Now one thing that I found with this effect, just keep in mind, is you want to make sure the person's head is pretty centered if the person's head is really far you know really close to the top of the screen this effect is not going to work so you want to keep in mind you want it probably with the subject's head is pretty low to the screen or in the middle of the screen or this effect is not going to work that well so if i play it you have this really cool kaleidoscope prism effect i just think it's a really cool effect it's just really easy just quickly apply this random tile plot um plug and adjust the settings and you have this really cool prism effect the next effect I want to go over is this really cool thermal effect. So the effect is called color reduce. So you're just going to apply the color reduce effect and there you go. You have a really cool thermal effect and of course you can mess with the settings. I'm not going to mess with the settings because it's going to take a very long time. Now this effect can definitely look really cool. What I found sometimes looks even nicer. Now this is a plugin that's already or an effect that's already built into Final Cut is adding this negative effect. I found sometimes that looks really cool. You of course want to adjust the settings and then click on linear invert. I just found sometimes that you know makes it look a little bit cooler but there you go now you have this really cool thermal effect and then you can mesh the settings this is much easier than trying to just you know recreate it by yourself just apply this really cool color reduce effect to basically imitate a thermal effect the next effect i want to go over is this really cool halftone effect so you want to go ahead and you know, identify where you actually download it so right here halftone as you can see it just creates a really cool halftone effect so if this is a look you're trying to replicate there you go just a simple plugin and you can you know simulate or recreate a halftone effect in final cut 
The next effect I want to go over is this really cool strobe stop motion effect. So as you can see right here, here is what the clip looks like. So what you want to do is you want to apply, now I included two effects in this bundle right here, stop motion and strobe. It's basically the same thing, but you, you it might you know, create different effects depending on the frame rate of your project. So either apply the stop motion or the strobe, and we're going to crank this down to let's say four, and now it's going to replicate a stop motion effect. So if I play it, it creates this really, or replicates this really cool stop motion effect. So there you go. So basically the posterizing time in Premiere Pro. Now you have that in Final Cut. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool bad film effect. So I play it right here. As you can see, it, it's a pretty cool effect. But what if you want to add that really cool kind of like vintage old film effect? Apply the bad film onto the clip or onto the adjustment layer. And then here are all the settings you can adjust. And here's just what it looks like at a default settings. There you go. It creates this really cool old vintage film effect. And of course, go through and adjust the settings until you get the look that you want. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool CRT overlay. Now this is part of the generator, so go to my generator, take this CRTV and then place it onto the clip and then of course trim it. Now here is the different options you have. If you trim it, it's going to speed it up. If you don't want the, the lines to be really fast, create a compound clip and then trim that compound clip. So if I play it, as you can see, it creates this really cool CRT. Now you can mess with the opacity, you can mess with different blending modes. I found soft light looks the best. So you see, now you have a really cool CRT TV overlay. You can mess with the blend modes, but there you go. Now you have this really cool CRT TV. Now this obviously looks kind of weird on just a clip. So you would have like a TV overlay or TV like overlay and then place this, you have this really cool screen, just emulate a screen just to help make it look a little bit more realistic rather than just like, you know, a video in like a TV, you know, frame overlay. So it's really Really cool you have this really cool CRT TV overlay now the next effect I want to go over is this really cool 3d orientation effect or title so basically what you do is you want you just place it on the clip as I did right here as you can see now that looks a little bit weird so now you now you can place your freeze frame so this is just again a very basic freeze frame transition so you can go to title drop zone and then click on your freeze frame right here I will link a video showing how to create a freeze frame transition but this is just you know another way of doing these freeze frame transitions which in my opinion freeze frame transitions are my favorite transition so this just just another way to do it as you can see and now we'll be able to rotate kind of in 3d space so if I play it right here it's just a basic freeze frame transition but with this really cool effect we can go ahead and take the Y rotation and let's say we want to start at 90 so now it's gonna kind of rotate in 3d space which this is impossible to do in Final Cut without this plugin click on the keyframe icon and now we're gonna to go to the end of the title and we're going to change it to zero that way it kind of like rotates in 3d space good luck trying to create this effect without this plugin it's just not gonna work you you can't move stuff in 3D space in Final Cut. So if I play it right here, there we go. Now we just rotates in 3D space. So there we go. Now you have this really cool 3D freeze frame animation. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool outer glow. So if I go to effects right here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and place on outer glow. So we're going to place on outer glow. As you can see, now you have this really cool outer glow. Now I've gone over videos showing how to create that really cool glow effect. It's not going to simulate, you know, the one that I have in the thumbnail, but this is just really easy. Instead of having, you know, there's a, I've done a whole bunch of videos showing how to create this. It takes a long time, but this is so much easier. So we're just going to crank the radius and there we go. Now you have really cool glow effect. Adjust the brightness, adjust the inner color, range, horizontal, all the settings that will be in Apple Motion or in Final Cut. So you can adjust it and now you have a really cool glow animation, but this is only applied to one of them. But as you can see right here, now you, there you go. You have this really cool outer glow, which I think is a really popular effect. You'll see it all the times in thumbnails, you'll have this outer glow around the person and there you go. You can just, you don't have to use Photoshop or anything. You can just download this plugin and then create this effect in Final Cut. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool unsharpened mask. So you can basically use this to sharpen your images. Now, in my opinion, I think the best use for this effect is for in thumbnails or posters or graphic design to give that really cool kind of like sharpen effect. So what we're going to do is going to scroll down to a fine unsharpened mask, apply it onto your, you know, cutout or whatever you have. Again, I would think the two best situations to use this effect is thumbnails and then like graphic designs or, or posters. So I take, and this is going to be an extreme example. So let's take the radius and let's take the amount and let's crank it all the way up. As you can see right here, it just it kind of had the, creates a really cool kind of a clarity or sharpen effect. So without it and then with it. So there we go. You have this really cool kind of like sharpen effect. Again, I would use this mostly for graphic design. I don't think I would ever use this in a video because it would look a little bit weird, but it's great to kind of make your, you know, cutout stand out. And I used it in my thumbnail. That's why my thumbnail, you know, looks a little bit cooler because I sharpened 
sharpen the image. I just think that looks the best. Anytime you see a graphic design or a graphic poster, the subject is always really sharpened. I just think that looks, you know, it just looks a lot nicer. Of course, there are other steps to making a graphic design, you know, look cooler, but this is definitely one of them that can just make it look a little bit, you know, cooler and make it stand out a little bit more. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool extrude effect. Now basically what it's going to do is it's going to make your text look 3D. So here's the text if I place the extrude effect right on as you can see there we go you it basically makes your text look almost 3d and you can go in here and adjust the distance you can adjust the lighting the cropping the extrude style everything like that because you can see it just basically makes your text look 3d and you've seen i've already used this effect multiple times in my thumbnails it's just really cool to make a, a solid object or text look a little bit 3d and just give it a little bit more depth now you can't rotate it around like 3d text but it just gives your 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 text or your objects or whatever just a little more more depth and just makes your you know image look a lot cooler. The next effect I want to go over is this really cool animated paper background. So if I play right here, this is what it looks like. Now if you download it for yourself, you realize that doesn't look anything like the preview. You have to actually apply the strobe effect. So if I disable the strobe effect right here, as you can see, it looks all wonky. So what you have to do, you have to actually add a strobe effect or a stop motion effect. And there you go. Now you have a really cool animated paper background. The next one I'll go over is this really cool countdown timer. So as you see right here, it just countdowns. Now, if you're wondering, you know, how do you get this in Final Cut? There really isn't no way of doing this. I actually had, you know, a client ask me to create a countdown and it was, I actually had to manually create the countdown because there is no countdown in Final Cut, but you can download this plugin and now you can have a countdown effect. Again, not going to be used in every situation. You're not going to use this all the time, but it's really cool to have this. Now you can actually, as you can see, you can change it to currency, percentage, binary. You can have a whole bunch of options. You can have the start, you can have the end, you can have it animate, you could change the font. So this is just a nice handy little feature. It's probably like four or five dollars on my store because there is no way of doing this in Final Cut. You actually actually have to have like a plugin. So you know if you're in, in you're in a situation where you need a countdown, there you go. You can go ahead and just download my store. Again, it's not going to be used in every situation, but it can definitely be really nice because there is no way of doing it in Final Cut. And let me tell you, doing it manually is really, really, really hard. So there we go. Here's the plugin for a countdown timer. The last thing I want to go over is these really cool text presets. Now I've made 10 of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the text preset and you're just going to import it into Final Cut. And as you can see right here, here are a whole bunch of settings. I tried my best to think through all the settings that would actually be practical. You can adjust the text, the font, the size, you can add an outline, you can disable the drop shadow, you can move the text itself. But there you go, you have these really cool animated text. So instead of having to create these text from scratch, you can go ahead and just download these text presets and voila and I'll, if you want to adjust the text what I would do is I would just import the text adjust the settings and then create a compound clip and then just trim the compound clip or else if you try to trim it without creating a compound clip what's going to happen is the animation is going to get all messed up so after you import the text just create a compound clip so for example, let's just click on this text right here, option G, and we'll just call this text right here. So create a compound clip, and now we're gonna go something like this, and now we can just trim the text. Remember, anytime you're going to adjust the text or do anything with it, create a compound clip or else the animation is going to get all messed up. Compound clips are just a great thing to have because it basically just like a reset button. I use compound clips all the time, but I would just encourage you to create a compound clip, especially with these generators. If you want to trim it, sometimes if, if the animation is all sped up or looks weird, I would create a compound clip and then trim the compound clip. That way it's not messing with the animation speed. So we'll wait for Final Cut to render and then I'll just show you what this really cool text effect um, uh, looks like and obviously put more time and effort into customizing it. I'm just kind of doing it the default. So if I play it right here, you have this really cool deal in animation. There you go. You've in total you have really you have 10 text um, presets. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, I have a playlist with over 290 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. So if you want to watch more videos like this, then make sure to check out that playlist. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.